Let's work on a more complex scenario. The use case here is, I need to troubleshoot VMs and ESXi hosts, including the underlying hardware. When you're creating a more complex dashboard, sometimes it's easier to start with pen and paper and have an idea how it should look like at the end. In this dashboard, I would like to have a list of my VMs which have CPU or memory contention. Once I have selected a VM, I would like to see a CPU usage chart and a memory usage chart for this VM. I also would like to see the ESXi host which is running that selected VM. And for this ESXi host, I would like to see the related objects, especially the hardware, the underlying hardware. And lastly, for the selected ESXi host, I would like to see the top 5 or top 10 VMs from the CPU, memory and disk perspective. Ok, let's start. First, we rename the dashboard and save it so we can easily find it again. Now we can place and resize and position all the widgets we specified in our pen and paper blueprint on the empty canvas. The easy part first, we edit the dashboard and we change the names of the widget within the dashboard to make it easier to find the right widget during the configuration in the next step. And I tend to use numbering as part of the widget name to have a kind of a workflow within the dashboard when consuming the dashboard at the end. Good, we start with the first widget, the object list. As always, we set the refresh content to be five minutes. And this one as the starting point, point is a self provider. And we set the output filter to only show virtual machines in this widget. In advanced options, we select again virtual machine as we would like to limit the list to virtual machines having a certain metric, which in this case is CPU contention and memory contention bridging a predefined threshold. For this use case, we just set 1% to have some more virtual machines in the list. As always, no additional columns. This time, before we start configuring all widgets, we will first set up the interactions between those widgets. The select VM object list will send the data to both metric charts widget 2 and 3, as well as to the object list showing the ESXi host widget number 4. The widget number 4, so the object list displaying the ESXi host will send that host, that selected ESXi host, to the widgets number 5, 6, 7 and 8. As next step, we configure the CPU usage chart widget. We let the refresh the content every 5 minutes automatically, the self provider is off and the input transformation itself as we are getting the virtual machine as object and we would like to show the metrics of exactly the virtual machine object. Within the output data section, we specify the metric this chart should display. In this case, it's going to be the CPU usage of the selected virtual machine. We can also specify thresholds for yellow, orange and red horizontal lines the chart widget will display to help us determine if the current usage is breaching that value. If we now select a virtual machine in the object list, we see the chart showing us the CPU usage and the three defined threshold lines. We configure the memory chart widget the same way as we did it for the CPU chart, but of course using another metric. In this case, it's going to be the memory consumption in percent. And we set another values for the threshold lines displayed within the widget. 
Now if we click on another virtual machine in the object list to refresh on the dashboard we will see that now we have um, a chart CPU usage and a chart for memory consumed in percent including the threshold lines. As next step we are going to configure the object list displaying the ESXi host running the VM we selected in the first step. In this widget we set the input transformation to parent as we would like to see the ESXi host in this list and ESXi host object type is parent of a virtual machine object type. In this widget we set the output filter configuration to object type host system as we would like to see the host system in this object list and as always there is no additional columns configuration. When we now click on a virtual machine we see the corresponding ESXi host. Now we are ready to start the configuration of the new top N widgets. We switch on the refresh content option, we leave the bars count at 5 and we set the round decimals to 0. Now the most important part, we configure the metric analysis as we would like to see a metric and we set it to top highest utilization here. As we would like to see the top 5 VMs for the selected host, we select children as the input transformation. Now we need to specify the metric we would like to display. We select as object type virtual machine and as the metric we would like to display we go for CPU usage in percent. We specify the label to display and the unit. It, we could leave it at auto as percent is the only one but we select percent here and we specify the maximum to properly size the bars in the widget. The color method is here custom as we would like to have different colors for different thresholds. For consistency we can set the output filter to virtual machines. Now if we click on the ESXi host in widget number 4 we see the top 5 CPU consumers listed from the highest one to the lowest one. The configuration of the top 5 memory consumers widget is basically the same as the one for the CPU consumers. The only difference is of course the metric we are using here. Here we are using the memory usage in percent as in this example. When we now click on the ESXi host, we see that the top 5 memory consumers are also ordered by, from the highest one to the lowest one. And finally the top 5 storage consumers. Again, the only difference is a different metric reflecting the total IOPS of a VM. Until now we configured every widget with auto select first raw set to off. And that leads to an empty dashboard when it's selected for the first time. To change this we set auto select first row to on and the object list will have the first item auto selected and therefore having the other widgets populated with data. If we do this also for the widget number 4 then we have the dashboard automatically populated with data when we access it for the first time. Now we are going to configure the relationship widget. Essentially we are specifying how many levels we are going up and down in a relationship chain coming from the object this widget is receiving to display another object related to this one. Objects may have many relations between each other and inventory trees are more or less kind of templates limiting the, the display of those relationships to certain object types and with this setting we now see vSphere objects related to the selected ESXi host. With the True Visibility Suite HPE management pack for example we can see HPE hardware objects related to the ESXi host. In this video you have learned how to create a more complex dashboard starting with pen and paper and having the requirements of the use case in focus and how to configure new widgets like metric chart and top n. In the next video you will learn how to export and import dashboards and I will give you a short introduction into content lifecycle management. 
Thank you for watching this video and make sure you don't miss the next part.